Hello everyone, welcome back to the lab. This is the second week's report of the TCG Birth of Destiny season North America metagame report. If you have not watched the first report, which is the previous weekend, uh, I put the links into the description section so you can always check it whenever you want. So this weekend, I included the following tournaments. There are five different remote dual regionals happen throughout the weekend, and three uh, IRL big tournaments happened, one of them in Maryland and two of them in Denver. The IRL tournaments has um, two standard tournaments, which is 107 players and 290 players. And on Sunday, there's actually a 3v3 tournament with 64 teams. So a total of 192 players in that one. So from all these tournaments, I collected uh, the top eight results from the remote dual regionals online, the top 16 results from the IRL standard tournaments, and the top eight results from the 3v3 tournament. So in total of 96 deck lists, this is where uh, the ratio are. For, for the pie chart, as you see, similar to last weekend, there's about a quarter of Sorso just kind of dominating the format, leading um, everything, and followed by 14% of Little Lust Tri Brigade, 10% of Drytron, 8% of uh, Flow Wonder Ease. Flow Wonder Ease is actually uh, something that's like not in the pie chart last weekend. This weekend, there's like a significant increase amount of both Flow Wonder Ease and Drytrons actually. And Virtual World PK, Tri Brigade, and a little bit even more Sky Strikers are just still hanging there. Uh, have enough tops that's like make make themselves not be categorized into others. And in terms of the specific list, I listed everything here. Uh, there are 26 or so, 22, 22 of them, like the majority, or the Tangy version, four of them being the Destroyer Phoenix Phoenix Enforcer variant, uh, 13 Lyra Lost Tri Brigade, 9 Drytron, 8 Flow Under Ease, 6 Virtual World, and including one Source Soul version of Virtual World, packing one of each Source Soul monster in the main deck, um, 6 Phantom Knights, 5 Tri Brigade, 5 Sky Striker, and falling to others, uh, three Outlitch, two Evil Twin, two Plunder Patrol, with one of them being the Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer variant of Plunder Patrol, actually won one of the regionals, one of the remote regionals online this weekend. Uh, two Invoke Dogmatica DPE, and then the ones, the one of Ultra Guy, Cyber Dragon, Dinosaur, Dragon Link, Hero, Invoke Dogmatica Shadow, Mac Knight, Salomon Grey, and another uh, Layer of Darkness Dragoon Control Stun deck. So the big difference from last week is that Dragon Link has fall quite significantly. Dragon Link from last weekend has like a good amount of them and have like a good section in the pie chart, where this week it completely kind of vanished and having only one list out of the 96 deck list collected. So if we start talking about some specific decks, like uh, kind of shine this weekend, the first one is a going second version of Tangy Source. So this actually, uh, this is a list piloted by Alexander uh, from Gamekeeper's Remote Dual Regional. He finished 4-1 and a second place in that regional. But um, the whole deck, the whole strategy was created by Han Jirari from last weekend's uh, Ghost, Ghost Championship tournament. Uh, I do have that tournament, the data is from that one, collected from last weekend's report in, in the Google Docs. So this version of Source Soul doesn't play any hand traps in the main deck. Instead, it favors of some strong going second cards such as Lightning Storm, Evenly Match, and Dark Ruler No More. Uh, Sorso, as some people may not really familiar with, has sometimes a sometimes struggles with like a follow-up issue after going first. And 
This build, like, instead optimize to go second and just choose to break boards after the after their opponent has spending the resources uh, to build it. Therefore, um, the way the way they play it will kind of minimize the issue of Swordsaw not having good follow ups. And in addition to it, cards in the in the sword in the Ten Yi Swordsaw version, such as the Incredible Ecclesia and the Ten Yi Spear Vishita. Those two monsters specifically uh, benefit more when when their opponent has a monster on their field. So they are naturally even better when they're going second. And thus making the deck like making these cards doing even better and fits fits well with the strategy of the going second. And if you look at this specific list, there are also three copies of Deep uh, Dimension Barrier in the side. D barrier is a very powerful tool against many decks in the format when it's going first. Like you can, uh, you can call synchro when you go, when you go against Sorso. You can call exceeds when you go, well, when you play against um, Lirlusk. You can call ritual when you play against Drytron, and you can also call exceeds when you play against PK. So it's always like a a strong tool when going first. And as a normal trap, it's like very hard. Um, it's it can be chained to like the common removal such as lightning storm, and it's also very hard to be answered since the only realistic realistic answer to the D, D barrier is red reboot, which is not only currently limited and also not really being played in a in a in the current meta in a lot of people's side, so. This this way, like D barrier is like another um, an option to use when the going second sorcerer deck choose to actually go first after siding. So altogether, making this deck like very very powerful when going first because all the going second card, uh, no, all very powerful when game one with all the going second card because they just always choosing second, and even after siding, they still have the ability to go first. With the D barrier and uh, the common floodgates such as anti spell and imperial order. So the next deck is Lyrilux Tri Brigade. This is a, this is like a similar deck such as um we we talked about it last weekend through the last weekend's report. The Lyrilux Tri Brigade don't really change too much. This list is um from David Jove uh from uh a fourth place finish in one of the remote regionals this weekend. He decided to use three cross out designator with one of every um, common played hand trap in the main deck, and also three Harpy's Feather Storm. With these six cards, he has a very very strong going first advantage since cross out designator not only can stop common hand trap um, that hits the 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 Lyrilus combo, it can also prevent the devastating effect of Nibiru. And um, so therefore, this way it ensures a very high successful rate for full combos. And also because uh, Lyrilus Tri-Brigade has both the Lyrilus part and the Tri-Brigade part, Crossout Designator in some, some matchups such as the Mirror Match or even other version of Tri-Brigade can potentially to be used as a strong disruption because it, it can negate anything in the engine from your opponent. And Harpy's Feather Storm going first is just similar as like the Dimension Barrier uh, from Source So it's a it's a trap, it's a normal trap that can that can be chained to common destructions, and also very hard to be answered. And whenever it's resolving, it's usually causing devast devastating effect that almost guarantee the victory of that game. And then if you look into the side, there are uh, three copies of Mr. Mines in addition to the usual um, side deck, going second side deck cards such as Dark Hero No More and Evenly Matched. So with these cards together, it's 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 to ensure that going second for the Lyrilus stack, uh, the, uh, David can just use these cards to to kind of bait all the negates from their uh, from his opponent, and eventually making the Lyrilus assemble Nightingale to attack directly, and and being able to exceed summon 
uh, Zeus in main phase 2 to clear the board as a going second strategy after siding. So this is a way, this is how um, the Lyralux, Lyralux deck uh, plays now. It doesn't change too, too much from last weekend. And after that, there is a new kind, relatively new deck, which is the DPE version, Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer version of Drytron. Chris LeBlanc um, finished 7 1 1, uh, 7th place after Swiss, and top 16 in the Rocky Mountain Collectible Charity Case Tournament in Denver, Colorado on Saturday. Uh, it's similar to Red Eyes Dark Dragoon in the past couple formats. Destiny Hero Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, aka DPE, is a new option for Drytrons since um, it's both an amazing ending board disruption as well as like a usual backup plan after like the Drytron combos being stopped, such as uh, draw, draw and Lockbird. But the difference is, unlike Red Eyes Fusion, it when when you draw Red Eyes Fusion, it's always a brick in your hand. Uh, Fusion Destiny is actually a fantastic card to draw, as the restriction is actually different. Fusion Destiny can still be used, uh, uh can still be used after a player activate any Drytron effects, uh, since it says for the rest of the turn. So, um, therefore, making uh making the DPE engine in the Drytron deck one less brick compared to uh, the Dragoon engine in the deck. And besides that, Chris also played Artified Size, uh, Artified Size Package with um, as a, like another layer of disruption. Size is a very accessible card in the in the Drytron deck because all the Artified monster are Light Fairies, so they're actually a target to be searched by Cyber Angel Benton. And he also run Artified Dagda in the extra deck, so that's another way to uh, to access. Artifact size and size can also be easily destroyed and triggered during opponent's turn because DP has a destruction effect for uh, to to trigger it. So uh, just with DP and size together, it's a very effective way to lock your opponent uh, out of the extra deck as like a way to to disrupt them. And in addition to the standard Drytron combo with Herald of Ultimates. Um, these everything together is making Drytron like one of the most dangerous that we're going first. And I guess um, this week there's more players figure out how to really combo optimally with Drytron. So Drytron has like an increasing, increasing amount of results from the uh, the decks collected this weekend. And after that, there is uh, Flow Wonder Ease. This is um this actually is another deck, uh, newly newly released from Birth of Destiny. Anthony Shu finished uh, seventh place in the side deck Remote Regional on Sunday. The uh for anyone not really familiar with Flounderies or Flounder as people call it, Flounder is a deck where all the monsters are um all the monsters are banished when they leave the field and. They perform additional normal summons instead of like normal, like normally other deck do special summons. So, and because of that, the deck is very good to use a uh, part of prosperity and part of duality. And because everything banishes, it's also working well with Dimension Shifter. And Dimension Shifter is like, uh, especially in the main deck, is a very, very strong hand trap because it's almost a turn ending hand trap against uh, a good amount of meta decks in the format, including like Phantom Knights, Drytron, and even 10 E version of the Source Soul. Uh, they, have, they all have like a relatively hard time against Dimension Shifter. And besides that, he Anthony also chose to run three copies of Book of Moon. Uh, this is like similar to uh, Cross Out Designator, but Book of Moon has this uh, versatility for both going first and second. When going second, for example, against like Sorso, against a Chi Shell, a uh, Book of Moon can just uh, can just straight be activated on the Chi Shell and and set a face down, and this way even turns off 
the potential source of blackout from in the back row to make sure the to make sure the flunder side is doing is not being disrupted in their turn. And when going first, Book of Moon can also be used similar to cross out. Since Book of Moon can be chained to common negations such as uh, Effect Veiler and Infinite Impermanence to book all the, fl um, the Flunder monster to face down, and therefore they still resolve with their effects. And uh, since so also the uh, Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer DPE and Fusion Destiny is very popular in the format, Anthony decided to choose run, uh, decided to run Solemn Warning instead of any other Solemns in the deck. Solemn Warning is the only well, Solemn Warning uh, is like a very interesting choice because Solemn Strike cannot be respond to Fusion Destiny since it's a Fusion spell, and Solemn Judgment can be too costly to negate Fusion Destiny in like a lot of the situations, especially also. Due to the fact Fusion Destiny is a hard once per turn but per activate. So if Solemn Judgment is being used on Fusion Destiny and the second Fusion Destiny is being activated out right after, it can, it can cost like a game because you pay half. But instead, Solemn Warning become like relatively the best option here. Since it only pays 2k, it's not as costly as Judgment, and it's actually a life against uh Fusion Destiny, and Solemn Warning in some situations can still be functioned as a Solemn Strike because the common monster negates, well, the monster um, the Flounder side will want to negate are things like uh, Sorcerer of Moye, uh, the Lyrilusk Burial Canary, and any like any other tribal game monsters, or even just the Inherent Special Summon of Extra Deck. Those can still be covered by by Solemn Warning similar to Solemn Strike. Therefore, Warning become like um, ra the relatively best Solemn in the current format, or at least based on what Anthony decided to choose. So this is how uh, the second week of the format goes. The second week, unlike the first week, as you see the pie chart, uh, there's still a couple decks re re remain relatively the same. Sorso still dominating kind of almost the format with like a quarter of representations. Uh, Lear Lusk is increasing slowly, so is Drytron uh, from the last week. And Flo uh, Flow Wanderies has like a significant increase from last week. Dragon Link actually uh, falls quite significantly as people probably losing interest, like just losing interest on the deck. And the other decks such as like Phantom Knights, Virtual World, and Tri Brigade, they just kind of hanging there, still doing okay, but not as good as like the the, the ones leading. So this is resolved the second week, and then uh, next weekend it's gonna be actually OTS tournaments uh, instead of any uh, remote regionals. So next weekend is probably gonna be uh, no tournament re reports as it will be. Uh, relatively difficult to collect data from OTS tournament, which are just locals. And uh, if anyone really like this kind of uh, weekly reports, uh, feel free to like, subscribe to the channel. And this is so far, I'm trying to maintain it as like a weekly thing, uh, or at least bi-weekly for situations like the OTS tournaments. And uh, if anyone have like, uh, if anyone like outside North America, feel free to uh, help me some data for like Latin America or just Europe or Australia. Feel free to contact me through either Discord or Facebook, or you just comment down in the in the YouTube section. Uh, I will I will be open to talk to you about like the details uh, for all the deck list that I collected and. Other information I will be having, I will be putting the link of my Google Doc into uh, the description sec section and the comment section. So feel free to go there and find out any deck list. Um, there's any deck list you're interested. There's also an Excel sheet uh, just kind of guide you for everything. So uh, I guess that's it. Uh, shout out to all the all the people, all the friends who. 
like who sent me data, who helped me organize these things, well, help me organizing things, help me, um, help me, uh, just writing the description for the decks, and I uh, appreciate all the support. And I think that will be it. That will be the the end of the second week. If you have anything, let me know in the comment section, and I'll see everyone in the following week or the week after. See ya.